Everybody doing good? Yeah. I'm so glad to see everybody here today and welcome online. So we are in this series, Baggage. If you missed last week, go back and watch it because we're talking about different kinds of baggage. And last week we talked about the baggage of unforgiveness and how it's weighing us down. And I know some of you this week, you're going to be with some family members around the dinner table for Thanksgiving, and there may be some people and they're thinking, I'm dreading that. So watch that and make sure you deal with this because God does not want us to walk in that baggage. He wants us to walk in freedom. Everybody say freedom. freedom. And that's what this series is all about, that we're living in freedom. Today, I want to talk about the baggage of materialism. Would, would you all agree that we're in that season now when marketers believe that they're going to convince you of you need some things that you don't really need? I mean, it's tough, isn't it, to, to think between what I need and what I want. And often, what we want becomes baggage in our lives. So how do we discern between that? I don't want that baggage. I want freedom. Let me walk you through a couple things today. In Matthew chapter 16, these are the words of Jesus. He says, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? What's the answer to the question for you? No. no. I mean, no, it's not, you know. But there, in the moment, it feels like it. And marketers are great at making me feel like it. Our series memory verse for the series, and I want you to just put this to memory because that's what we're all about, uh, is the walking in this freedom. It says, I will walk in freedom. Let's say it together. I will walk in freedom for I've devoted myself to your commandments. Psalm 119.45. That's where we want to get is that we're walking in freedom, not being in bondage to anyone or anything on this earth. So go back to the forgiveness thing, man. If we're walking in unforgiveness, that baggage is holding us back from the freedom that God wants us to have in Jesus Christ. And materialism is one of those things that becomes baggage in our lives that keeps us from living in freedom. And yet we can become convinced of what we need, we need, we need. Let me illustrate this. I don't know how many golfers are here today, but I, I do like to golf. I think it's fun. So this is my, uh, I, I, I use Callaways, but these are Costco golf clubs. I'm not a great golfer. I paid, uh, you know, in Costco, I mean, I paid less for my bag and my clubs altogether than you'd pay for one club sometimes. <laughs> So uh, a few months ago, I, I got to play, this is my Costco driver, and I, I hit this, I can hit it really straight, about 225 yards, which if you're a golfer, that's not that far, okay? It, it's really not, especially when you play with like our children's pastor, Kyle, he can hit it 260 to 300, and it's just, I hate him in the name of Jesus in that moment. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean, right? That's my baggage, but pray for me. So a few months ago, I played in a tournament. It was a fundraiser for um, actually Convoy of Hope. We just finished the series working with them. And uh, in the tournament, I played pretty good. So my, me and the guy that I played with, we won our tier. Two things happened. I, we played up at TPC. It's up in Phoenix. It's a famous hole on the 16th hole. I got closest to the pin, so I got 100 bucks for that. I had to spend it in there, the TPC thing there. And I, I realized that when I went in to spend it, there was nothing under 100 bucks. <laughs> My wife and I went in. We're like, where's the sale rack? Uh, there wasn't one. We finally found a shirt for under 100 bucks. I'm like, I would never spend this on a shirt, but I can't spend the money anywhere else. And the other thing I won was a driver. And I won this driver right here. And I kept thinking, man, I got to catch Kyle when it comes to driving. I mean, he can drive. I know I can do it if I had a better driver. So I won this driver because I won the overall, we won the overall tournament. And this driver which is ridiculous, but if you buy it new, it's brand new, uh, it costs you 600 to 900 depending on where you get it. I know, that's stupid, isn't it? <laughs> Some of you have drivers more expensive than that. But I'm thinking, it took me like three weeks to get it in the mail, and I'm thinking, I can't wait. This is going to change my life. <laughs> isn't that how you feel about some of the things they're marketing to you right now for Christmas? Yeah. 
Hey, Jason, could you go get Kyle for me real quick? Yeah, go. just if, if he's running, I know I, he does video, but if he's doing the class, can you just stand in there for a few minutes? I'll just need five minutes. Um, anyway, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking I can't wait. So this is adjustable. I took it out the first time, I couldn't hit it. And I thought, well, I just need to adjust it. So I adjusted it so I could hook a little bit. I think I've hit this thing good maybe three times in the last four months. I thought it would change my life. I thought having a, you know, an almost thousand dollar driver would make me a good golfer. Isn't that true in some area of your life right now? Where you're like, man, I need, I need, I need. So this was discerning between being marketed to my need and my want. I was actually playing this week with a few guys and I'm still, I'm still convinced. I keep pulling this thing out and I'm like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get, it. I've gone to, I practice with it. And this, I was doing horrible. And they're like, Jeff, you were playing horrible day. So at the very end, I pulled out my cheap driver from Costco and I knocked that thing 225 straight down there. I'm like, man, where's that been all day? And I didn't tell them that I switched drivers. <laughs> Kyle, come up here for a second. So, yeah, you, uh, did I, I'm sorry interrupting your class. So, Kyle, I'm just talking about how good of a driver you are. And I got Big Bertha here. You know Big Bertha. Broken a few of those in my life. No. <laughs> so, here's, here's what I've learned in life. You know, um, I always want to get the right things into the right people's hands. Because otherwise, it's materialism. So I've been wrestling with this for about four months. You've watched me. So I just want to wish you Merry Christmas. Big Bertha is yours, buddy. Yes. Yes. Oh. This isn't an illustration. Then you're going to take it No, it's not an illustration. And I'm just... I'm, I hate you even more in the name of Jesus. Yeah. She's... She deserves a be she that. deserves somebody that can hit her, and I can't. I've proved it. I cannot believe I'm doing this. This is a real call of God because we compete against each other every week when we play, and this is not going to help my game at all. <laughs> Thanks, man. Brother, you played. bet. Oh, you better take the cover too, because I I want nothing to do with her. It was not for me. God gave her to me for you. Thank you. Goodbye, baby. <laughs> So, seriously, I, you know, I was just praying about that this morning, and I'm thinking, that, that's, I didn't need that club. And I'm still, I'm hitting it better with this cheap little, I'm not a pro golfer, and I go out just to have fun. And the moment I quit having fun, it's like, it's, some of us, that's, that's the way it is with materialism. It, it takes over us. I mean, I started, once I got this good club, I started going late at night. My wife said, I'm going to bed. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to the driving range. <laughs> like, what am I doing? I'm not a pro golfer. You know, if I get to play once every week it would be phenomenal. I play about three times a month. It's like, you're not going to score that great playing like that. I don't have that kind of time. I don't want to have that kind of time. Materialism, though, can take over and we become a slave to it. What I just did with Kyle is the greatest thing I know to deal with materialism. Giving is the answer. It's the antidote to materialism. Here's what I do know. God is all I need. Everybody say it with me. God is all I need. Man, as we come into this season, there are so many things I love about this season. We're celebrating Jesus coming to earth to become the savior of the world, our savior, to save us from our sins. He's coming to be the Lord of our lives, the one who calls the shots. He has a purpose and plan for us. It's good. It's pleasing. And, and yet, I'm bombarded with all these things that I think I need. And what he wants is for me just to need him. That's all he cares about is our relationship. And he promises this. He says, if you'll look to me as your provider, I'll meet all your needs. That's what he wants, that we would trust him that completely. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus is asked a question. He's given a challenge. He's talking, and one of the guys from the audience says this. He says, hey, can you tell my brother to divide up 
our inheritance equally, justly. And he probably asked Jesus because he knows Jesus is about justice. He is all about it. Go back and read his life. And Jesus, not going to get involved in just these kind of affairs, he says, beware, guard against every kind of what? Greed. What is greed? Well, it's not just about materialism, but we have greed for so many things. He says, guard against this. And I want to tell you, guard against this. It becomes baggage in our lives. Anybody ever, you watch the show um, uh, Hoarders? Anybody seen that? Yeah. I mean, we look at that and we're like, how could it happen? And maybe some of you are dealing with that. I'm sorry you're dealing with that. But you may look at it and go, well, how does that happen? And yet we do that in our lives, in our hearts, and our minds. We think we have to have more, 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 more. Jesus says, be on guard, guard against this. Life is not measured. Let's read this together. Life is not measured by how much you own. It's not measured by how much you own. It's not measured by having a $900 driver. I couldn't afford the driver anyway. And it looked like it on the golf course. (laughs) You see those people, you know, they're out there and they got money and they, they look like, man, they should be playing on the tour. And you're like, all they have is money. They can't play. That's the way we look in life sometimes. It's not measured by how much you own. Well, what is it measured by? Well, Jesus, it tells a story here. In fact, I I just want to read the whole story to you. It's very short. This guy's asked the question, and Jesus just dives right in. He says this. He says, a rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. Man, I love that. That's got to be a kid's book someday, doesn't it? Fertile farm with fine crops, farmer. Uh, He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, which I think this is weird anyway. Does anybody talk to themselves like that? I know we all talk to ourselves, but do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and go, oh, my friend. That's weird, man. My friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything that you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Now, Jesus didn't say there that we shouldn't have earthly things. We, we need them. I can't think help, but help but think of the, the Christmas movie. It's very popular this time of year. Oh, it's a Wonderful Life, old Jimmy Stewart movie. There's a scene in there. If you haven't ever seen it, watch for it. Uh, watch it sometime. It's a very profound movie. But in, in, this, in the scene, there's this angel that comes down, and uh, he talks about, uh, he says, do you have any money? Jimmy Stewart asks him, and he goes, we don't need money up in heaven. And Jimmy Stewart says, well, it comes in pretty handy down here, bub. <laughs> And sometimes we forget that God's the provider of all that. It, God, God doesn't, he doesn't say here, don't, don't have stuff. He doesn't say that. I mean, he gives us stuff for our pleasure, in fact. He tells us that. What he said was, how foolish to store up treasure on this earth and not have a rich relationship with God the Father. How do I distinguish between those two, between I need and what I want? That I'm pursuing a rich relationship with the Father. How do I deal with materialism? That I'm pursuing a rich relationship with the Father. That I'm focused on that. Now, I have to tell you, I struggle with this. I don't know how much is enough or not enough. (laughs) I don't get it. Every day, I struggle with this. We do Financial Peace University around here. If you're in debt, and man, God wants you to be free from that stuff. I get that. Uh, in that, though, Dave Ramsey, he talks about how much you should have saved up and all that. And, man, it's, those are great, wise guidelines. And wisdom tells us we should prepare for our future. Scripture talks about that. But I don't know what the, the need is. Uh, I'm always looking at Scripture. I hear what Dave Ramsey says, and I'm like, well, where did he get that? Where does he say we should have a six-month savings or this much savings? I'm like, I don't know, because Jesus said God provides for our daily needs. We're to pray daily. I'm not suggesting you give everything away. 
Uh, I'm saying we need wisdom to walk through this daily. And we can't start thinking about ourselves. That's the problem with this guy. And I, I want us to just lean into his life a little bit. This parable that Jesus gives us. God is all I need. Say it with me. God is all I need. So how do I live this out? Well, I need to first, I need to assess my priorities. That's what Jesus is talking about here. Does the priority become if I only had this house, then my life would be great. Think about my driver. It's like, if I just had that, then my life is going to be great. If I just had this relationship, then everything I, if I just had this car, this job, this position, if I just had this much money in my bank account. And then we get there and it's like me hitting my driver and I'm like, I was having more fun with this old cheap Costco driver <laughs> because we make it about something else instead of a rich relationship with God the Father. So I need to assess my priorities. Let's go back to this moment with Jesus. He told them the story, rich man had a fertile farm. Don't you guys see that there? It's kind of Dr. Seuss, isn't it? Oh, come on, you say it with me and you'll feel it. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. Yeah, okay, we're gonna write that book together. Okay, and he says to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for my crops. Notice what he says. What should I do? He didn't say, God, what do you want me to do with this? Big difference. It's subtle, but it's life-changing. What should I do? This is about me versus God. I've given you my life. As you provide things, do you know how much more fun I would have had playing golf watching Kyle hit that driver over the last four months instead of me? <laughs> Seriously, I've been struggling. I just would have had fun watching him enjoy it. Jesus said this. He said, seek the kingdom of God above what? Everything else. How do I know there's between my wants and my needs? Man, I'm going to seek your kingdom, Lord. God has blessed me, man. You may be in a point where you're like, God blessed my business this week with an extra million dollars. What do, I, what do I do? God, what do you want me to do with this? Why are you blessing me with this? I'm seeking your kingdom. I want you to flow through me, work through me. How do you want to work through me? What portion should I give? What portion should I serve with? What portion should you want me to live on? What do you want me to do with this? It's all yours. He says, seek the kingdom of God above all else, live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. I read that sometimes like, God, give me everything I want. I mean, seriously, I'm, I'm just like you. When they come out with the ads and the new gadgets, so I drive a, a Ram truck. If you've been here long, you probably know that I drive a black Ram Rebel. I love my trucks. It's a 2016, though. And, and I, I know I say, though, somebody here drives a 2000, and you're like, Jeff, you poor soul. I, I know. <laughs> I, I'm not complaining. I'm not suffering. God has blessed me. I get that. But have you seen the 2024? <laughs> I mean, I've seen the commercials and I get sucked into that. I start going to this build your own Ram app and I tell Kathy, man, it's a lot cheaper than I thought, babe. <laughs> and that's about how she responds. And I mean, my, mine has very few miles on it. But what happens is the world is constantly, the enemy wants to suck me into us, into materialism. Jesus called it greed. Be careful. It doesn't mean somebody here, you can afford a 2024 Ram. It's okay. It's all relative. I get that. Because the 2016 Ram, it's relative. Some people go, wow, I know. It's relative. But what we're saying here is, God, I'm seeking you first. I'm not seeking anything else. You meet my needs. And as you provide, I want to do what you want with it. I want to pursue you. What's amazing is how he blesses that because God's looking for people he can trust. So I need to assess my priorities. Am I saying God's all I need? And some of you are here, you're not a follower of Jesus yet. 
you're just checking this out. Somebody drug you here today. They bribed you with lunch or something. I don't know. Uh, All I know is I'm glad you're here and God's pursuing you. And he wants you to know that in your pursuits of life, he's really all you need. Everything else ends up as a dead end. If you could see the dead end of my driver, I mean, seriously, I got this cheap driver. I can drive it 225 yards. I want to drive 260. I get this $900 driver. I'm driving it 125 yards into the bushes. <laughs> and I keep thinking, hey, it's just one more adjustment. No, there's more to it than that. Sometimes that's the way life is, that we're pursuing something wrong instead of contentment. Assess my priorities. The second thing I would really challenge you with is as we come into the season to avoid the baggage of greed is ask for wisdom to discern between wants and needs. We've been talking about this. What are my wants? What are my needs? I cannot convince my wife, Kathy, I need the 2024 Ram. I can't convince anybody. I can't convince myself. Yeah, good. (laughs) I don't need that. I, there are so many things I don't need. Now, sometimes God, man, he just blesses us with those things that we don't even need. But really, what's the difference between my needs and my wants? And I'm telling you, this is one where I say, this is tough. We need to constantly be just looking to Jesus. Then he said this. He said, I know. I want you to see what's going on here. This is the farmer, the fertile farmer with fine crops. He says, he wasn't a fertile farmer. He was had a fertile farm. Never mind. <laughs> That's a different book. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. My, sorry, Kathy. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> he says, I know I'll tear down my barns. Then I'll have room enough. He goes on. He says, and I'll sit back, say to myself, Actually, when you read those few verses that I read in the original language, the Bible's written primarily in Greek, uh, the New Testament is, or Aramaic. So we have just English translations. There are 14 times that this farmer says, I or my, in one conversation. If you and I are talking and you say I or my that many times in those few amount of words, I'm thinking narcissist. And then he goes on to say, and I'll do this. And then I'll say, take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Like that's the end of life. That's it. That's our goal. Now, I know I just hit on something there for some of you. You're like, that is my goal. I'm just telling you, that's not God's purpose for your life. I can't tell you how many people who've made enough money, gotten to the place where they say, that's all I'm going to do. And they're miserable. Because they have no purpose. God created you with a purpose and a plan. Part of that is being a part of his purpose and plan. The mission of Jesus to lead people to him. If you want joy in your life, you will not find more joy any other place than sharing your faith. If you're struggling with joy, I dare you start sharing your faith. Scripture promises that, that the joy of the Lord just consumes us. Why? Because we're doing his purpose and plan. Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. Jesus didn't say, I came to take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Anybody glad for that? I am because he sought me, the lost. And that's what we're called to. I I can't tell you how many rich people I've met that are miserable. We see them on TV all the time, right? They have everything and their lives are miserable. Why? Because they don't have a rich relationship with the father. There's a... um, I just met a guy a few a few weeks ago. I was at another, another ministry event. I was so privileged to meet him. He was sit, seated right at my table, so I had to talk with him. He's a financial guy, and I'm like, I don't want to talk to this guy. You know, just, I mean, I have my own book, Lord of the Fries. You know what I mean? If you don't have it, it's free. Pick it up. But he wrote this book called Faithful with Much. His name's Tony Amaradio. I'm a radio. And uh, he's this big wealth manager. And so we got to talking over dinner and with my wife, Kathy and I, and we really liked this guy. And suddenly I realized, oh, he's a real kingdom, God's kingdom minded kind of guy. And we started talking about it. And of course, I'm, think, I'm saying, okay, I, I know I don't have money, but I'd like some wisdom. He says, I'd love to meet with you guys, just talk to you, man, and help you out. And so even we set up a call with him later. Even as we're talking with him, I'm, I'm saying, Tony, listen, I'm telling you, I really don't have money. I, you know, here's what I have, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, Jeff, 
that's not what my life's about. He said, yeah, my, my normal client is worth way more than $10 million. But he said, I'm here about advancing the kingdom. Now, I know some of you, as we're talking about this, you say, well, I have so much. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to be faithful with this according to scripture. Man, I've gotten to know this guy now over the last few months, and uh, he's actually going to come to our church next year and uh, just help us walk through. Those of you who are saying, what do I do to live out wealth management as a legacy for God's kingdom? So this week I was talking with him and even he said, uh, with all his wealth, he said, I'm not going to leave it all to my kids. I've set it up to advance the kingdom after I'm long gone. He said, I don't want to ruin my kid's life with riches. Afterwards, Kath and I were talking. I said, wow, that was a powerful statement. Because we all think if we just had money, if I just had that driver, if I just had all of this, then I could do this. And God says, that's not it. I want you to have a right relationship with me. Remember, Jesus said, what would it do to gain the whole world but lose your soul? Parents, let me ask you this. What would it benefit you to gain the whole world but your kids lose their souls? As a grandparent, now I'm thinking that way. What would it do if I had everything at my disposal but my grandkids don't know Jesus? And they spend eternity separated from God the Father in hell. Puts everything into perspective. That's what Jesus is teaching on here. He's saying, watch out for materialism. It's destructive. Greed will destroy us. Don't hear me saying you can't have nice things. There's nowhere scripture says that. In fact, Jesus didn't say that here. He just said, make sure you have a rich relationship with the Father, that it, it's all his. We're trusting him as our provider. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. Now, why did I put this verse here? Because we're talking about our wants or our needs. This is where I have to ask, God, do I need this or I want it? I need your wisdom. And just because I have the money for something doesn't make it a need. What if I started asking for wisdom every time I made a purchase and said, God, would you give me wisdom? Is this what you want for my life? Or would you rather me give this to someone else to do something else? That's hard because I have some wants that I want. Anybody else besides me? I just want to see how many people are going to be honest with me there. Besides just me, right? So ask for wisdom to discern between wants and needs. God is all I need. Let me give you a third just application from this one moment in Jesus' life. Allow God to transform my heart and mine. It really comes down to I've got to allow him to do the transformation. Not Jeff, but him. Lord, what do you want? I want to follow you. I want, a right, I want a rich relationship with you. And Jesus said that he came to give us a rich and satisfying life. He's not talking about money, although some of you are going to be very blessed that way because you have the gift of giving. He wants you to do that. But he wants all of us to have a rich relationship with the Father, a relationship where we have freedom, freedom from guilt, freedom from shame, that we walk in a life of faith every day without fear. That's what he wants for us. Allow God to transform my heart and my mind. He goes on, Jesus says, yes, a person is a what? We get to choose. Do I want to live as a fool? A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but it's not period there, okay? I hear teachers teaching like it says period. That's not it. He says, but not have a rich relationship with God. (laughs) Here's what I know. Most of us, we start at the end of the sentence. We said, well, I want to have, or we start start thinking, if I could just have a rich relationship with God once he gives me earthly wealth, then I'll do this. That's not how this works. It's about saying, no, really, Lord, I want you to transform my heart that all I want is you. I surrender it completely to you, your will. I'm pursuing you. Change my heart, change my passions, change my wants, change my desires to be about you. 
And it's something I definitely, I have to work on every day. God, change me. In 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, here's the principle. Paul, who writes a lot of New Testament, he says, true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. Now, it really, if, I, if I, we put on a class and I had Tony come and I said, hey, anybody who wants to be wealthy, come. If I, if I told you the real principle, you go, oh, wait a minute, I just wanted money. But I want you to see this. True godliness... With what? Equals great wealth. We tend to think all of our stuff is great wealth. Until we start losing our relationships. We start still having a heart where we have everything we want at the world's disposal. And we think, I'm still miserable. I still want more. And what's the problem? It's because we're pursuing greed. And Jesus teaches against that. He says, I don't want that to have you. It will destroy you. Paul says, it's godliness plus contentment equals great wealth. We all understand that. I mean, those of you who are married, if I said, hey, I can give you a million dollars, but you're going to have a miserable marriage or, you know, no million dollars, but you're going to have a great marriage, very fulfilling. That's a pretty no brainer. Some of you are going, not for me. (laughs) I take the million. (laughs) If I could give you a healthy family, you could be a successful dad. Your kids will love you and honor you or a successful mom. Your kids will love and honor you. Man, you're going to have a really healthy relationship with them or a million dollars. Most of us are going, I I don't need to even think about that. I don't have to pray about that. Why? We understand the principle. It's godliness with contentment is great wealth. And that's what he has for us. That's what God wants for us. As we're coming into the season where we celebrate Jesus' birth, that's why he came to this earth, to give us a rich and satisfying life. The confusion comes in when we are so tempted with all the things of this world. Here's what's interesting. I'm going to challenge you guys to take a next step. But after this teaching, Jesus turns to his disciples. And you know what the very next teaching is? He he doesn't really shift gears. He says, "I, I want to talk to you guys about money and worry. And boy, as I read through that chapter, it's all in the same chapter. I go, oh, Anything I'm worried about, this is a red flag that I'm not really trusting God with. Jesus is talking to this guy who calls out to the crowd, giving this illustration. It's very quick. And then he turns to the disciples, guys, what are you worried about? Here's what I want to challenge you to do this week. I will begin each day this week with this prayer. Would you read it with me? Thank you, God, that you supply all my needs according to your glorious riches in Jesus. You are all I need. Now, that prayer is based on Philippians 4.19, and I would encourage you to go back and read uh, Philippians 4.19 as well. It's a verse that's worth getting to know. You almost have it all right there in that prayer. But let's make that our prayer for a week. I'm just going to ask you and challenge you to do that this week. It's a week of thankfulness. It's a week when Black Friday's coming. I know we're, we're going to be dealing right away with not only our wants and needs, but parents, your kids, they have some needs this year, right? And how do you deal with that with them of saying, no, 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 that's not something you need. It's a want. I think about Tony and him saying, I'm not giving all my wealth to my kids. I'd ruin their life. And sometimes I think that's one reason I'm not a wealthy man, because I think I'd spoil my kids and ruin their life. And that's not what God wants to do. Let's make this our prayer this week, just every day for one week. Thank you, God, that you supply all my needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. You are all I need. And let's see how that transforms us. Let's see how that changes us. Let's see what God begins to do in our heart and mind. God is all I need. Really? Really, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, when it comes down to it, I've never been, and I've been at the deathbed, on the side of the deathbed of many people as a pastor over the years. I've never once had anybody say, Jeff, I wish I had more money. I wish I had a bigger house. 
You know what I've had a lot of people say? Wow, I wish I'd spent more time with my family. I wish I would have honored God more with my days, with every breath. I've had so many people say, if I had it to do over, I would pursue God in a different way, a passionate way. I would love my family. I would love those around me. I don't like those moments, but in some ways, that has been an incredible privilege in my life because I've been able to look ahead and say, I'm going to lay there someday. What am I going to say? Am I going to say the same regrets they're saying, or am I going to make a rich relationship with God the Father, my pursuit, and let God provide for all my needs? (laughs) You heard my story today. I'm just like you. I mean, I'm not some godly person. That I never have problems. Even as I gave Kyle that driver right now, I'm thinking, I got to get a better driver. <laughs> I'm struggling with the. I struggle with it just like you. I get it. But what if I could really live in this? God, you're all I need. And here we, we're doing Christmas offering, all those things. Part of why we do that as a church and if you're new with us, you don't, you don't have our brochure, man, uh, this is about the Christmas offering. We give it all away. This isn't because we need it. We need money to pay the light bills, but none of this goes for that. Uh, but that's not why we're doing this. I do this as a pastor to say, we as a church are going to live this out saying, we're going we're gonna to trust you as our provider, Lord. And when we give above our tithes and offerings, and we, we say, okay, we're going to give away $75,000 this year just to people in need and ministries in need. It's not like we don't have needs. That's not it. It's that we're saying, no, we're going to live this out, Lord, and this is all for you. It, this breaks our grip of materialism, even as a church, to say we're going to do this. God is all I need. Here's what I want to do. I want to pray for us. And as I do... I realize there's some of you that you're just making a faith decision or you're considering it. And this is a big challenge to say, okay, God, I'm all in. That's what Jesus calls us to. Some of you as followers of Jesus, you struggle with this. Go back and read this chapter and see how Jesus walks through with the disciples' worry and how greed can become baggage in our lives. He wants us to live in freedom. I realize in a moment like this that You're not here by accident. Nobody's watching online by accident. God's speaking to our hearts about some things. Father, I I just want to pray in this moment. There are some folks that have been listening to my voice that you're speaking to us. You've been drawing them to you. If that's you, you've never made that decision. This is your moment. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord, I want to live in freedom from guilt and shame and sin. I ask you to come into my heart and life and forgive me. Help me to begin a right relationship with you right now. And for those of you who are followers of Jesus, as you heard this, we all struggle from time to time with different things. But if you're saying, Jeff... The materialism, the greed, the wanting more instead of making it about a rich relationship with the Father. Let this be your moment. Just pray, God, I I want you to be all I need. Would you transform my heart? I know in my heart of hearts, Lord, that life is about a relationship with you. Help me to stay focused on that. Lord, I pray that for all of us as we come into this Christmas season and all the marking that we're going to have, that you would help us to keep our eyes focused on you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for coming to this earth to take our place. Would you help us, Lord, to walk in trust and faith that you're our provider, you and you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching, for joining us. 
I uh, really want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel here so you can keep uh, up with all the updates. We love having you be a part of it. More than anything, what I'd really like to do is be able to meet with you in person, to be able to have you come and be here on campus with us. If you're local, come by. Uh, be a part of one of our services. And if you're from out of town and you're going to be in the area, let us know. We'd love to connect.